Welcome to the second part of the promised course on calculus of more than one variable. I am happy that the course on calculus of one real variable has been well received. It has had one rerun or two reruns I guess. Maybe you would have a rerun in the current or in the next session of the MOOC courses. As before I would like to concentrate on the board, but keeping in view that there has been a request to be on doing things on the tablet. But I believe that just being in the tablet is a quite a boring thing, you would be just uh, seeing somebody doing blah 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 and then something appearing here on the screen. Unless some drama is done on the blackboard, maths does not really becomes an interesting stuff. So, I decide to make a combination of both the blackboard and uh, this tablet. So, I start with my first lecture. which is called vectors in plane and space. You most probably already have learned something about geometrical vectors in school. So, same thing like this is a vector in space vector is plane is something which I do not have to tell you. But let me first start motivating this whole idea of functions of more than one variables and doing calculus on them. You know one of the first things that you learn in school addition. So, you are given two numbers and you are asked to add. So, put it in a more abstract way what are you doing? You are just doing the following. So, I give you a number x and I give you a number y and there is a kind of machine called an adding machine. So, let me write down this machine as an adding machine. Adding machine and then if you give me the input x and if you give me the input y, I give you an output z. So, these are the inputs. I give you two numbers and you add them and you give me a single number as the input. So, which I write as z is equal to x plus y. So, when x say when x is equal to 3 and y equal to 5, z it implies that z is equal to 8, the output is 8. So, this z equal to x plus y can be written as f of x y function of x and y. I want to also mention that this notion of vectors is intimately linked with the function of more than one variables. So, you observe that here when I am adding, so you are doing something in school. So, before you learn function of one variable, you have essentially started learning functions of two variables and this is the fun, we really do not realize it. And what I want to say is that why the notion of a vector is associated with this uh, function of more than one variables. For us, let us just hold on to two variables. Because you see, when you are writing a function of the form z, equals to x plus y, you have two input variables. Basically what do you give me? You give me an input variable x and y, this is my input variable and out comes the output. So, there is some operation here, addition operation and out comes the output z which is x plus y. So, uh, the input variable is not one real number but two real numbers. So, what lesson I learned here, the first step is that input variable when I add two numbers, input variable I can view it like this, it consists of two real numbers.
right? It just consists of two real numbers. Okay. Great. Now, how does how do we represent two real numbers? We represent them as a point on the plane, as a Cartesian coordinate. That is what you have learned in your basic school. So here I draw it. The drawings do not become clear, my straight lines are usually curvy lines as if my hand is shaking which sometimes does I cannot just pull them straight for some strange reason. So, this is the x axis which you know very well and this is the y axis the vertical axis with this point being the origin 0 0. So, any point x y it can be anywhere I am just putting it here in the first quadrant does not mean that it is only in the first quadrant. So, any point x y I can view it as a geometrical vector just draw a line segment connecting 0 0 with x y and at the point x y put a direction. So, this x y so if I call this point as p which has coordinate x y this x y represents the vector O p x y represents the vector O p. So, the tip of the vector is represented by two real numbers. So, I can also sometimes write because O is always 0 0. If I write this as O sorry I not given O is the origin O is 0 0. So, O p vector can always be written as x y. Great, I think it is good up to here. So, the plane is a collection, the plane is a collection of these points, this whole two dimensional plane and we call all these collections, we give a name, we call it the R2 space. So, R is the space of real numbers on which we did calculus of one variables. So, it is just a line with the origin and the numbers written on the left and right, the negative ones to the left and the positive ones to the right. And now R2 which you see is the whole plane, the plane of the board actually it is kind of infinite, we, we do not we want to imagine it like that. So, a, a lot of things in is happening in your imagination which you might find very strange when you want to actually relate it with physical objects. Um, now, that is slightly a different story, we will not get into that at this moment. Go. So, let me just write down that a two dimensional Cartesian plane is given as a collection of vectors of this form where x is in R and y is in R. Now, you might ask me why are you calling this O p a vector? So, what is a vector? You have learnt in physics that vector is a quantity which has which is an object not a quantity really it is an object which has both magnitude and direction. So, let me write down. So, it is a quantity having magnitude means a length, length means length from origin, magnitude and direction. So, let me just give an example look at this quantity O p here. So, O p is in one direction suppose I can draw a vector of the same length as O p, but we will have a different direction. So, this can be portrayed by drawing a circle. So, give me some time to draw a circle. So, I will draw a circle with center zero. 
and radius 1. So, here I will have x axis. So, physics tells me vector or quant or objects which has both magnitude plus direction. Now, here this o this vector op has a magnitude which is the length of this vector op which will come we will come to later on in the next lecture how do we calculate length and all those stuff. But it also has a direction. Now, now I will show you that there are two objects, two vectors which can have the same length but different direction and hence they are different vectors. So, two different points on a plane actually represents two different vectors. So, that is what is the key idea behind it. So, let me draw a circle like this. So, the circle which is given by the equation x s square plus y square equal to 1, the circle which has which is centered at O the origin and has a radius 1. My drawing is very bad, many of the viewers has much better drawing than me. So, I am sure that you would forgive me for my stupid drawings, but I am trying to actually convey some mathematical idea. So, this is the circular boundary, the circle. So, this is 1 0, this is minus 1 0, this is 0 minus 1 and this point is 0 1. Now, take two different points on the circumference of the circle say consider P which is x hat y hat and Q which is x dash y dash. Now, observe O p and O q. So, what is, so you join with O both O p and O q. So, O p is the radius of the circle. So, its length is 1 because this has radius 1. O q is also radius of the circle and hence has the length 1 because this is a circle of radius 1 that is what this equation says. Length 1. But look at the direction of OP and OQ, you can immediately see that the directions are different and so they cannot really represent the same vector. So, that is why a point or an input for a function of two variables is represented by a vector. Now, how can I go and represent vectors in three dimensions? Of course, you know that up to three dimensions everything is I can visualize and beyond three dimensions I may not be able to visualize. Of course, you cannot visualize then geometry becomes algebra. You can just do many geometric mani manipulations are viewed through algebraic manipulations. So, when you are in three dimensions, when you are in two dimensions, you are talking about length and breadth. When you are in three dimensions, you are talking about length, breadth and height. So, here I have three axes. This is my x axis y axis and z axis. So, this is x axis, y axis and z axis. So, any point in a three dimensional plane, a three dimensional space has three components length, breadth and height and has to be represented by three numbers. So, here is any point P p is a kind of prototype point and this is having three numbers x, y, z. So, if you drop a perpendicular on the x, y plane, this x, y plane and then from there it hits the x, y plane at some point say p dash 
and from P dash you draw perpendicular on the x axis and then you draw perpendicular on the y axis then this length from the origin O to say Q this is Q dash and Q double dash then Q dash OQ, OQ has a length x, OQ dash has a length y and PP dash this one has a length z, this one this, this whole thing has a length z. So that is your length, breadth and height. So once you have created a model or with three variables, so you can construct this is called R3 which is called the three dimensional Cartesian space. So let me write down three dimensional. Now you might ask me what is the dimension, is there a proper definition of a dimension? Yes, but here we would take on first our intuitive knowledge, our intuitive view, of we, we know what is the meaning of being in three dimension. We you, ourselves are three dimensional objects sitting in a three dimensional space of this room, length, breadth and height. So this is a three dimensional Cartesian space. Cartesian this name is coming after the famous French mathematician philosopher René Descartes who invented co coordinate geometry. So how do I represent this? Any point is a triplet of numbers x, y, z where x is element of R, y is element of R and z is element of R. Now can there be a four dimensional space? Of course, the modern theory of special relativity depends on four dimensional space. So special relativity for example, uses what are called four vectors. So, where the first vector is time and the rest are the space vectors. So, that gives us makes the four dimensional space, four dimensional system of space time. So, special relativity where t is the time vector and x, y, z are the space vectors. So, the geometrical view of physical space is much better realized because time as Einstein showed that time is not absolute, neither is space and everything is relative and hence it is much better visualized if we club up time and space together. But anyway we have always in our normal physical space is three dimensional and when we add on time we get a four dimensional space. So this is natural to have spaces of more than three dimensions. So in general mathematicians speak about an n dimensional space and the model is called Rn, it is called the cart n dimensional Cartesian space. So, any vector in n dimensional Cartesian space will see one, once in a two dimension you have two, two elements three dimension you have three elements and in n dimension you must have n elements. So you have x1, x2, xn such that each xi is a real number where i is equal to 1 to n. That is our model. So such spaces are in which consists of vectors is Rn. So Rn is often categorized as a kind of space which contains vectors and sometimes it is called a vector space, vector space of dimension n. Now in geometrical vectors that you have learned how do you add two vectors? You know when you when you do a, your geometry in two dimensions, you know how do you add two vectors? 
I am just removing this part so you can easily have an idea. So what do you do? You add two vectors. How do you add two vectors? You know in the in in the standard school high school vector geometry what you do is that okay you have two vectors one is say so this is your p this point is p with the coordinate x y another is say so op and this is oq so given as say x dash y dash so how do you add it how do you add these two vectors so you draw a line from p parallel to oq and so I draw a line parallel to OQ. Basically, I from from Q I draw a line parallel to OP, and there I from here I draw a line parallel to OQ, and they meet at a point, say R. So the new vector which joins O and R is called the addition of the two vectors OR and OQ. So, OR is viewed as an addition of OP and OQ. So, we, we have OP plus OQ. So, what is the coordinates which represents this vector? If you are slightly, if you take a little bit of time out of your busy schedule of today's life or you leave your mobile phone for, for quite a while, you can immediately show that this coordinate is nothing but x plus x dash will be the x coordinate and y plus y dash would be the y coordinate. So any such space vector space of dimension n has two major operations that are important. operations in Rn. So there are two operations in Rn. So what are those operations? Number 1 is called vector addition. So how, how do I add two vectors? You know ultimately the resultant vector would be represented by a vector whose X, coord x coordinate would be the sum of the x coordinates and the y coordinate would be the sum of the y coordinate. The intuition that I, you have in two dimension would come up. As I told you in the introductory lecture, the difference essentially is between R and R2 and once and there is slight difference between R and R3. But once you have some idea about R3, you can have a, have a fair idea about R3, the rest is algebra. So vector addition. So what does vector addition mean? So you have two vectors x x1, x2, xn in Rn and y equal to y1, y2, yn. So these are all the coordinates in Rn. Okay. And then the new resultant vector which is the addition of these two vectors has a coordinate so you add the first coordinate of x with the first coordinate of y. So it is x1 plus y1. Then the second coordinate is x2 plus y2 and the nth coordinate is xn plus yn. You see the same intuition what we did here. We added the first coordinate with the first coordinate of p with the first coordinate of q, second coordinate of q p with the second coordinate of q. So you add the two x axis, the first posi position and add the two y positions. The same thing we have uh, done here, you have just defined this whole thing. There is another operation which is called uh, scalar multiplication. Basically you are, you can now pull a vector or shrink a vector. So here is a vector, a line, you can pull it like a string and you can also sh shrink it down like a string. So this is called scalar multiplication. Scalar here for us would always be a real number. So what is scalar multiplication? What do we do with the scalar multiplication? 
what we do is that you take an x, take an x, x1, x2, xn in Rn and you take a lambda element of R, then lambda times x is same as the vector lambda of x1 lambda of x n. So, direction of this vector nu vector lambda x is same as the direction of the vector x, while the direction of the vector x plus y is, is like o, o r has a different direction from both o p and o q. So, x plus y has different directions from uh, x, z has a different direction from x and y, but when you do a scalar multiplication lambda x has the same direction, but the length only changes and this is also in R n. Okay. So, these are something which is typically absolutely, so I have to also write for here, you can understand that this is also in R n because this is a tuple of n real numbers. So, I without telling anything you should also be able to know that this is in R n. Now, these have certain properties. I, if I keep on telling you all the properties, it will bore you. Either you go to the text which is mentioned, which I can show yeah, that this is still available, you can go to the go to Amazon and buy it. Basic multivariable calculus, it is an excellent, excellent book. I do not think there is anything which is better than this. I have I have not found anyone which is written in a simple, nice way for everyone to understand. I guess the audience here is not just math mathematicians, it is all consists of physicists or chemists of uh, engineers and mechanical engineers, electrical engineers, economists and statisticians and, and maybe even from biology. So, I am trying to make it look as much as simple as possible there, but there are certain things apart the with these properties you can do certain things. One and for example, so, if you have an x as a vector x1, x2, xn. Now, what I do, I also I take a vector and I, I, I multiply 1 with x, which I write as minus of x, and this is the vector whose coordinates are. Now, suppose I add these two vectors x plus minus x, what do I get? I get 0, 0, 0, it is a 0 vector, 0 vector which we can also write as a big 0. And another interesting fact is that if you now add 0 with any vector, because addition is commutative, either you write 0 plus x or x plus 0 does not matter or x plus y and y plus x are the same. This will make x remain as x. So, sometimes by taking a little advanced mathematical language borrowing it from group theory in algebra, we call this as an additive identity. So, this is slightly more erudite language you may choose to use it, you may not choose to use it. And minus x by the way is called an additive inverse. Now, what is more important is how can I represent any number say in three dimensional space, can I represent any not number, any vector in three dimensional space in terms of some basic vectors, in terms of some standard simple vectors, can I always do that? And that is what I am going to show and that is what we are going to discuss which is called representation of vectors. And I am going to use a notation which physicists would like and engineers will also like. Mathematicians who know some linear algebra might be by some luck might be disappointed, but does not matter. 
uh, what I write is also can be written very easily in the way modern mathematicians write representation of a vector. So, we will just bother about three dimensional vectors first. I will leave you with a question of how do you represent n dimensional vectors. So, in three dimensions which we already have there. So, here is a three dimension. I again again I am drawing. So, there is a little time which flows off as you draw it. So, let me underline this. So, in this axis I will first draw three vectors. So, the point where I have the coordinate 1 0 0, I will call this vector, I will call this point say E 1 and this is the origin and this point E 2 which will have 0 1 0 vector and the point E 3 on the z axis, maybe not that, I will be going too far. E 3 which will I will call it 0 0 0 0 1 vector. So, the, the 3 vectors O E, O E 1, O E 2, O E 3 represents the point 1 0 0, 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 respectively. They re, these vectors are representing those coordinates. Now, this vector OE 1 given by 1 0 0 is called the I vector by physicists. So, this is what physicists would call I vector and OE 2 0 1 0 is called a J vector by a physicist. And OE 3 1 sorry 0 0 1 is called the K vector by physicists. Now, I come back to the drawing board and let me draw. So, I now have the x axis, the y axis and the z axis and let us consider any number p, sorry any I not number I am so sorry any point p which is represented by x y z the three coordinates. So, I connect them and complete the vector o p where o is the origin with 0 0 0. So, the origin is always 0 0 0. I am just to remind you I am writing it on the side so that you do not forget when you re see the video. And here you have the i vector, here you have the j vector, here you have the k vector. Physicists would always like to call O p a position vector, the position vector of a point that is a vector O p is talking about is giving you the position of the point p in space. So, O p as many physicists would call as a position vector, position vector of p. Now, many physicists would like to write this position vector as r vector, o p vector is equal to r vector. How do I represent r vector? Now, if you go by simple mathematics, so now 
if you look at it very carefully, I can write this vector x, y, z in the following way. So, x is a real number, take x as a real number, multiply it with 1, 0, 0 the scalar and multiply scalar multiply y with the vector 0, 1, 0 and scalar multiply the vector 0, 0, 1 with z and add them up that would give you this vector x, y, z, you can just try it out, it is very simple. Now, once you have done it, you know that this is representing the r vector. So, this r is being represented by this coordinate x, y, z and this is i vector, this is j vector, this is k vector. So, you can write what physicists always write that r vector is x into i vector y into j vector and z into k vector and this way of writing has a lot of advantage especially when doing applications in natural sciences and I am an engineering and that is what we will really uh, use in many many of our applications. We, we are not going to uh, go beyond this today. So, uh, just to end it I am giving you a example. Now, consider a, how do I represent a line for example, in three dimension. Is there any way I can represent a line vectorically and, and write down its equation in three dimension? You see how we can do it using vectors. So, take a line L and which passes through a point Q I am not, I know is the origin here, I am not drawing the axis, which has coordinates x naught, y naught, z naught and another is p, which is a called the running coordinates, any, 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 any point p which is lying on this line L. So, from O you draw this position vector of q, O q and the position vector of p. O p. Now, consider this vector p q and let us consider d vector and in this direction of L, just parallel to L, there is a vector d. Consider a vector d, d vector which is parallel to L. And so, it d is essentially along the same direction of p q. So, d is say given as some real number t times p q vector. Or p q can be written as t into d, right. I, you you will soon realize that ok, I have basically have a sum taken a vector d and if I want scale it up, scale that or I can take a vector like this a bigger one and if I can scale it down or scale it up, I will get a or if, we, if we, it could be in this direction d, I can scale it in the negative way putting a negative number and I can get make it exactly equal to uh, p q. Basically what you do, you take the length of d, you take the length of p q, you take the ratio and see what is t, p q by d should be t. Now, if you look at the vector p, you will immediately know from your basic geometry, vector geometry that O q plus p q is exactly equal to O p vector. Now, what is O q? O q is represented by the coordinates x naught, y naught and z naught and p q is t into d and o p is x y z. Now, t, now suppose d is the position vector of a point whose coordinates are a, b and c. Okay. So, a, b and c are basically lying on a line parallel to the line L then what would happen, 
I can write this equation now becomes x naught y naught z naught plus t times a b c is equal to x y and z. And z. So, what do you have? You have that x is nothing but x naught plus a t, y is nothing but y naught plus a t and z is nothing but z naught plus a t. So, this is exactly the equation of a straight line lying in the space, lying in three dimensional space in terms of the parameter t. It is called the parametric representation of a straight line. So, what we have learned now is parametric representation of a straight line, presentation of a straight and I am using shortcut in this WhatsApp world, shortcut is much more important. So, friends I think you have enjoyed this talk, I hope so, that is you will decide and uh, we I hope this mixture of the board and this makes much more sense and so let us end it up here today and the next lecture would be on lengths of vectors and inner products, dot products, okay. Thank you very much and good night.